This morning, we're shining a spotlight on the investigation into the death of 19-year-old Stephen Smith. Smith was found dead in the middle of a rural road in South Carolina back in July of 2015. And his death was initially ruled a hit and run. But in March, SLED announced that they would be devoting more resources to the case as they investigate it as an intentional homicide. Now, eight years after Stephen Smith's death, investigators are saying they've unlocked his cell phone and his tablet. On Friday, we spoke with a former investigative consultant for the Smith family, who told us that Smith's phone was unlocked years ago. I find it kind of interesting that they're making this announcement now that they have access to the phone because when I got involved in this investigation, at the time of the Murtaugh murders, when Maggie and, and Paul were killed, and I first got involved, you figure that was nearly three years ago now. It will be three years this coming summer. But at that point, the phone had already been accessed. Um, I was given a DVD of all the photographs that were removed from the phone and given to Stephen's mother, Sandy. Um, so law enforcement had access to it back when I got involved over two and a half years ago. So I, I don't know what this revelation is that they just got access to it. All right. So let's bring in our special guest now. He is the attorney representing the Smith family, attorney Eric Bland. Eric, good morning. Good to see you. I was so surprised on Friday when I was getting this information. We had to give you a call and ask you to come on the show and clear things up for us, please. So Mr. Uh, Peterson's slightly correct. The phone has been uh, unlocked for a number of years. What hasn't been unlocked was the tablet. The tablet was not destroyed to the point that what was on it was not recoverable. The tablet, um, and, and I think I have confirmation, has been unlocked within the past year. And so now we have additional information and from what we understand Stephen communicated a lot with the people that he was associating with and the people he was dating on his tablet so um, sled obviously isn't going to tell us what they're learning from both the phone and the tablet but this is something new that didn't exist when mr peterson was performing services for the smith family we you know the family is a little bit perturbed at you know, he's out there talking about the investigation when he was the investigator. He doesn't really have the authority to do that. The family doesn't want him talking about it, but it is what it is. He was 50% correct. Gotcha, Eric. Okay, so correct on the phone aspect, incorrect on the tablet aspect. I have a clip where he is talking about the tablet. Let's take a look at that. So Stephen's mom turned over the tablet to these two investigators. They refused to say who was paying them, who they worked for, and didn't say. That's a whole nother can of worms. When I got involved, I asked for the tablet. I went back to these two guys and I said, give me the tablet back. They refused to give it to me back. Then I found out that they had destroyed the tablet. Sled got a search warrant to go to them to retrieve the tablet because they wouldn't sell it surrender to sled either and they destroyed the tablet so to my knowledge the tablet has been destroyed and there was no information that was recoverable okay and so eric you could hear me gasping there as i'm listening to him talking uh, so that's the incorrect part of this thank goodness the tablet is in existence recovered and perhaps right now as you and i are talking sled agents are looking through it well, yeah, I mean, that's what happens when you have a number of people talking on uh, about Stephen's case that really aren't authorized to do it and don't have the up-to-date information. What ends up happening, Julie, is, you know, a misstatement travels halfway around the world before the truth can lace up its shoes. And uh, it, this has kind of taken on, you know, a life of its own about the tablet being destroyed. Yes, it's true that uh, these investigators came to Sandy and she was kind of bulldogged into, bullied into uh, giving them the tablet. Uh, don't know whether they, you know, were cooperating with SLED at the time. I'm not familiar with that, but I do know that SLED has the tablet and I do know that it, it, it probably will yield some information. 
That's got to be very encouraging uh, for Sandy Smith, your client, Eric. Could we talk about her? She needs answers. As you know, the victims, I mean, they're what this case is about. They're the center of it. We know there's a lot of attention all around the world. But the Smith family, um, how are they feeling knowing that this could lead to something? Well, I'm cautiously optimistic, you know, because every time something happens with Alex Murdoch, uh, this investigation gets pushed to the back burner. Um, I'm confident, though, that SLED wants to get answers for this. They're they're clearly now under the microscope, and you know it's our chief law enforcement agency in our state. And if they can't solve this uh, crime or at least provide Sandy with answers, it it doesn't look good for them because obviously they've been able to solve everything concerning Alex Murdoch. And I do believe that the same people who have been in the orbit of Alex Murdoch's machinations and all his different things that we've talked about over the past three years, whether it's the murders, the financial crimes and the problems with, you know, Paul, all those things. I do believe that everybody who's been in that orbit has knowledge of what may have happened to Stephen. And the one question that Buster has never been asked and Buster never has answered is, um, does he have any knowledge about what happened to Stephen? I have no knowledge that he's a uh, part of what happened to Stephen. You know, he clearly denied that. He denied that he had a physical relationship with him. But I think the one question that needs to be asked to Buster and he needs to answer is, does he have any knowledge of what happened to Stephen? I love it, Eric. I love it. He should be asked that question. He should be interviewed if he hasn't been interviewed already. Uh, Eric, curious uh, if you know, I know certainly SLED's conducting their investigation. They may be giving you limited information as uh, the attorney of the Smith family. Uh, have they said anything about whether they've interviewed Buster or not? Uh, the, uh, Chief Keel won't provide that to me, but what he has said is that this is very much an active investigation and that there are a number of issues that he has to get answers from from several people and as we have uh, learned over the course of the spring and summer last summer there are five to six people which led believe have information as to what happened to stephen mm, eric thank you for that one thing that always troubled me i'm sure it does you and we've we've touched on this before but i want to play a clip about it from your client sandy it's the information about the murdochs alec and Randy Murdoch being at the scene. Uh, to me, this just stinks to high heaven if they were there. Let's watch. When they removed his body from the road, and that was about 9.30, um, I seen me and my daughter and my son, Chris, seen Alex and Randy Murdoch at the scene. When Joel was at the sheriff's department, him and Stephanie were at the sheriff's department, I was on the phone with Joel, and Rain, uh, Joel said, hold on, Randy Murdoch's calling. And so he said, um, he said, that was strange. And I said, what was it? He said, Randy Murdoch called and wants to uh, help with Stephen's investigation. So the civil attorney, uh, two civil attorneys, really, because that's mainly what, what Murdoch was, you know, part-time prosecutor, a disgrace to the badge, as we know. Uh, but they're there. Uh, this just is so troublesome, uh, isn't it, Eric? Have you learned any more about that since the last time we've talked? I have. Ooh. I have. Um, Randy claims that he was there because Sandy's ex-husband, Joel, uh, who was representing, um, Randy was representing Joel on a worker's compensation clay case. He said that he was asked by Joel to go to the scene, which kind of makes sense. The question is, why was Alex there if he was there? Now, according to Randy's attorney, Randy said he was not there at the time that Sandy said that she saw both Alex and Randy at the scene. His attorney says that they were there the following day and it was Randy and an investigator. Now, I've known Sandy Smith now for well over a year and a half. Um, she's pretty smart. She she knows what she she saw and she's pretty good with facts. Now, simply, the, we have a, a dispute and a credibility issue. The police will be able to solve that, the investigators who were there. Um, police were there at the scene, according to Sandy, and, and she said she saw Randy and Alex. All Sled has to do is ask those police officers, did you see Alex Murdoch at the scene? 
and that'll answer that question. That's right. Well, and Sandy Smith has a lot of credibility, as you said, Eric. She knows what she saw. She knows who was there. And, and certainly it's uh, in the Murdoch's interest not to be there at the time that she said she saw them because it really right. looks fishy. Uh, it does. And we know Alec Murdoch, anything he says, similar uh, you to, can't believe. <laughs> Please, Eric, go ahead. Similar to Julie similar to when Alex and he and his father showed up at the boating accident on the marina and then went to the hospital. It looks like that they're trying to possibly shape an investigation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if they did, uh, we could see more charges brought against Alec Murdoch uh, if he did try in some way to exert improper influence over this one. We've got to leave it there for now, but Eric Bland, thank you so much for your time and uh, all the information you're sharing on this one. Give our very best to the Smith family, if you would, please. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas to you and yours, Eric. Thank you so much.